All right, guys, welcome back to another video. This is a quick one today. I'm working on my 2005 Honda Pilot. And my wife was driving to work, and the drive indicator on the dashboard started flashing. What that means when that happens is that your transmission has a problem and it's sending a code that's indicating to you that there is a problem with the transmission. Don't panic right away because there's a common issue with the 2003 to 2008 especially Pilot and Odyssey and all the other vehicles that have you know the V6 3.5 engine and the automatic transmission. So I hooked up my blue driver scan tool which I highly recommend. There'll be a link in the description below. You have to identify what the code is first and you need more than a basic scan tool to do that. You need something that can read the transmission codes from the vehicle, which is an enhanced level. So I'm getting, I was getting a P0872, right? and a P0872 means transmission fluid pressure sensor slash switch C circuit low. And then I also had a P0700 which is just a generic code for the transmission control system malfunction. So anytime you have some other sort of transmission code, that's going to also give you the P0700. All right, so what that code means is that my fourth gear pressure switch on the transmission has a problem, either with the wiring or the switch. It is usually just the switch itself. So I'm gonna show you how to find them, how to find it, how to replace it, I'm also going to be changing the third pressure switch because they usually like to fail in pairs. And you'll be interested to see what I found when I started tearing into this. I am not the first person who has been here. So what you want to do is jack up the car, put it on a jack stand, take the wheel and tire off, and there is some plastic shrouding that's held on with a couple push clips that's covering this area. So I just kind of took the two push clips out, bent that down. I'll have to bend this back to get to it. But you can see that right here is our fourth pressure switch. And then over here, it's hard to see, pointing at it, is our third pressure switch. So I'm going to take this little black cover off with a 10 millimeter. So you can see what's going on behind here. So I have already installed my new switch, but you can literally just reach in. Unclip the wire and there is the switch. You can use a 22 millimeter deep socket to break it loose. It does have a crush washer on it, so as soon as you pop it loose, you'll be able to turn it out by hand, or you could use a 22 millimeter wrench to get it. So when I took it out, I discovered that there were these junk aftermarket sensors already installed, and I bet they haven't even been in there a real long time. And the one of them has already failed, so you may be tempted to run to Amazon or eBay and buy the cheapest thing you can find, but you're just going to be doing this again very soon. Luckily, it's not that hard of a job, but when it comes to sensors and switches and electrical pieces, I only use genuine Honda parts. So I'll have links below to the two switches that I bought them on Amazon. They're kind of expensive. They're around $60 each, but I was able to get them uh, due to uh, back order pr production supply chain issues right now Honda has one of these back ordered uh, and it's hard to get so but I was able to find the genuine one on Amazon so I went ahead and replaced that I also picked up a pack of these 10 millimeter crush washers Honda wants like three dollars a piece and you have to buy a minimum bag of 10 so you want to spend $30 for cross washers? I don't think so. You can reuse the ones on your pressure switches if they're not too bad, um, like once, but I just wanted to use new ones. I recommend you use a new crush washer also. So let me go ahead and reconnect that connector. 
Okay. And then I'm going to put this on. So again, that is our fourth pressure switch, which was, in my case was the one that was actually causing the problem. Okay. Now, our third pressure switch, you can see, is right back under here. It's the tan one. Same thing. Remove the electrical connector. 22 millimeter socket comes right out. So again, right here. So it's a little bit higher than the fourth pressure switch. That's the third pressure switch. Again, I want to replace both of them because both of them were these cheap crap replacement sensors you can get for like ten dollars they don't look the same uh, they're not the right color so you can see the markings on them don't recommend those you see what happens someone put those in there before i bought this this thing only has a hundred and fifty thousand miles and here we are replacing them again but this time i'm using honda parts so hopefully i don't have to replace these again so after we get these installed, we'll put everything back together. Um, we will clear the codes with the blue driver, take it for a drive and make sure everything is good to go. All right, so again, just a quick video. I wanted to show you where these are. It's very easy for the DIY person to do this himself. There's no reason to go pay a Honda dealer a bunch of money to do this if that's your problem. You have to isolate that that's your problem, though. Don't just want to start throwing parts at it for no reason. Because you'll be out $120. All right. Again, links in the description. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Until next time, we'll see you later.